everybody, this is Anne. We had so much positive response to the textures we achieved when we used sodium silicate on thrown pots and stretched them out that we thought we'd experiment with using sodium silicate on slabs, then show you three hand-built projects. First I'll decorate the slab, then I'll make a simple bowl with it. I started by rolling out a clay slab thicker than a quarter inch that would be a contrasting color with my white porcelain. Here's some slip that I made by slaking down my white porcelain clay scraps with water to a thin yogurt consistency. If you want more detailed instructions for making slip, check out the link above. I'm going to coat the whole thing, but you can be creative with the application. While the slip was still wet, I dipped a fan brush into sodium silicate and brushed it through the slip in circular motions. I started to see the slip congeal into little clumps as I made streaks through the slip. I just let the process happen. With a heat gun, I dried out the slip until it was firm but not too dry. It'll be ready when you bend the clay and the slip starts to crack. Next I stretched out the clay by throwing it sideways or just picking up the edges to break up the slip. Keep an eye on the clay tearing along the edges or the clay getting too thin. I love how the crackles echo the brush strokes I made. I used a round lid of a jar to cut out a circle from the clay. Then I cut it out with the needle tool. I had this plaster form on my shelf. I thought it would work well as a mold for this small bowl. The plaster was poured and then I carved out a divot from the center. I centered the clay over the plaster, then I gently tapped the plaster over the table so the clay would slump on the form. I then covered the clay with plastic wrap to protect the fragile slip and I worked the edges down around the form. With my fingers, I slowly worked the center clay down into the divot. Now this is what I was hoping it would look like. It easily released from the plaster. When the bowl became leather hard, I cleaned all the plaster specks from the surface. Now never fire any plaster in the kiln. Then I rounded the rim with my fingers. I bisque fired this and glazed it and then fired it to cone 5. I love this little dipping bowl. Now I'll show you how I made a cup. I started again with about a 3 8 inch red slab and coated it with the porcelain slip. This time, I dipped my fan brush into the sodium silicate and experimented with different vertical brush strokes. Notice that when the brush was full of slip, I cleaned it off with a sponge. Again I dried out the slip. I tested to see if it was ready by putting my fingers under the clay to make sure the slip was dry enough but the clay was still flexible. Then I tossed the slab around like this. When I was happy with the texture, I placed a sheet of plastic wrap over the slab to protect the slip. 
I had this John Hasegawa template for a cup that I used as my pattern. I traced this onto the slab, then I used a ruler to make the final cuts. I laid out a sheet of plastic wrap on my table, and then laid the slab face down on top of the wrap, preferably right along the bottom edge of the plastic, like so. I had a length of carpet tubing I thought would make a nice form to wrap this around. I laid the tube down in the center of the slab, then pulled each side of the slab up over the tube and began to pinch the ends down to the other side to attach. I like just that little bit of brown clay defining the seam, and I really appreciate the imperfectness of the design. To make the bottom of the cup, I placed another sheet of plastic wrap over a scrap of the slab that I had already made. I flipped that over and gently ribbed the surface. I then placed the bottom of the cup over the slab and traced around the edge. I scored the edge of the circle and then scored the bottom of the cup. I slipped one edge and then attached them together. I removed the excess clay and ran my finger against the bottom edge to seal it. Now I was able to take the carpet tube out and twist the plastic wrap out of the center. With a wet finger, I compressed the top edge to hinder any areas that might want to crack. If it looks like I don't have a tight enough seal on the inside of my cup, I'll add a coil to the bottom when the cup dries to leather hard. Now here's the finished piece. The texture sort of reminds me of the bark of a birch tree. Finally, I created a piece from a homemade template. I created this form from paper in three parts. The tricky part is that the bottom needs to be rounded. I found this trash can at my grocery store where the top is already rounded. I had this gridded quilting rotary mat that I centered on top of the trash can. You can see that the weight of the clay will push the mat down so it'll dry with a rounded bottom. This is exactly what I want. So I cut the taped form apart and labeled the paper so I know how to put it back together. As a large slab of clay can be difficult to maneuver, I decided to make three separate slabs, one for each pattern piece. Again, I coated the slab with slip, then used my sodium silicate coated fan brush to make strokes in the slip. To experiment, I used a smaller fan brush to make little circles like knots in the bark of a tree. Again, I jostled the clay around to break up the slip. I liked that brown seam in the cup project so much that I wanted to experiment with that again. I cut apart the slab in two sections like this. To avoid a bulky connection, I pinched the bottom slab with my finger, placed the top slab over the first one, then pinch the seam area so the two parts would reattach. I did this again with the third section. Now I have these nice brown streaks in the slab that give it direction and interest. Jim thinks it looks like bacon. I then placed a piece of plastic wrap over the slab 
and traced out the first template piece on top of it. Then I cut it the rest of the way with a needle tool. I flipped the template over and used my fingers to reinforce those areas that I had cut. I probably could have done this before cutting out the template to avoid stretching. Ah, live and learn. I repeated the same process for the second template piece. Finally, for the bottom, I thought I'd just cut out a plain red slab. Now it's time to assemble. I put a sheet of plastic wrap down so I could easily move the pieces around. I placed the top two template pieces so the first two edges I wanted to connect were side by side. I scored the two edges, slipped one, and butted them together. To make a strong joint, I rolled a coil and pushed it firmly into the seam. I then wrapped the clay over the top and connected the joints on the other side in the same fashion. I again rolled a coil and pushed it into the interior seam. That was very important. Next, I centered the bottom onto the mat. I scored and slipped it. Now I was able to place the top pieces onto the bottom and attach it all together, making sure to put a rolled coil into the bottom edge seam. I sealed the bottom of the body with my finger and made adjustments where I needed to to get it looking like the image in my head. In the end, I trimmed down the sides a little to narrow the top opening, but I love how this turned out, and the texture has so much movement it pulls your eye around the whole piece. I hope this experiment gives you some inspiration to try something out of the box just by using your clay scraps. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.